Hello everyone, SOB here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the new Vodwar Miracle Worker Juggernaut, the newest promotional pack ship added to the game. When I first got into serious high-end gameplay a few years ago, I never thought I'd see the day where a ship would come along to finally take me away from the Scimitar. The Scimitar was such a formidable ship that even the Tier 5 version was among the best min-max ships after the release of multiple Tier 6 ships. It took the Tier 6 Scimitars to finally make people fully abandon those Tier 5 Scimitars. Other ships have come close or had performance gains elsewhere that gave them an advantage in some situation, but none have been able to do what the Vaudoir Miracle Worker Juggernaut has done for me so far. The Vaudoir Juggernaut is the first in this new class of Juggernaut starships. The Vaudoir designed this ship to be a slow-moving ship with an extreme amount of forward firepower. As such, it features very low maneuverability in exchange for a layout that provides it with what I believe gives the most raw offensive potential for energy weapon setups that we have ever seen. This ship boasts a meta-friendly setup with 5 fore and 3 aft weapons, with the four weapons supporting all of the cannon variants. It features 4 engineering, 2 science, 5 tactical, and 1 universal console due to its commander tactical slash miracle worker seating. It's a full-fledged miracle worker ship, gets all the benefits that has. In addition to this miracle worker seat, we have a lieutenant commander tactical slash intel, a lieutenant commander engineer, a lieutenant science, and an ensign universal. This results in an overall layout for this ship that is extremely friendly towards a typical ultra-high-end cannon build. However, this does come at a cost of maneuverability. The ship features a base turn of 6 and an inertia rating of 20. If any of you have ever flown the Scimitar, you'll be slightly used to how this drifting is. Overshooting a target will be a very common issue with this ship. Before I go over the performance of the ship, let's take a look at the unique feature, console, and trait. The unique feature of the ship that is built in is essentially a new type of lance. This juggernaut array fires a large bolt of Polaron energy directly in front of the ship. It will severely damage whatever it hits and will push whatever is still alive back quite a bit. The array is buffed by Polaron buffs, so running with a Polaron loadout will help this quite a bit. But even without a puller on build, I was able to get a very decent number out of this when used against a group of enemies, such as the group of spheres that come out of the gate in Infected. Next up we have the supercharged Sif Conduit Universal Console. This console is equipable on any starship, but was not added to the existing Vodwar console set. Upon inquiry regarding why it wasn't included in the set on the most recent dev stream, they said it was due to them not wanting to mess around with the set that had been out for four years. Personally, I feel it's quite a mistake to not have this as part of the set, but we can talk about that later. For the console stats, there is a very small passive Cat 1 Polaron damage buff, which is equal to about 30% of what attack console provides. It also has a minor 15% whole regen buff, but the clicky is where most of the goodies are. The clicky has been on the screen for you to see. It's a constant plus 50 all damage resistance rating for the 20 seconds it's up. And for each second hit, you get a buff that gives you up to 75% cat 1 energy damage, 75% turn rate, and 75% speed. It also reduces the cooldown of the juggernaut array by one second per stack. You can gain a stack each second, and each stack lasts for five seconds meaning a total of 5 stacks is possible at any point. The console is decent, but it requires you to have at least one incoming attack per second to get the max benefit. It then provides no real survivability benefit from being hit, so it's a bit of an odd console. You do get the resistance, but you would think that each of the stacks would have some sort of survivability buff on them. I could see some threat tanks out there potentially wanting this, but this really is not a console I would go out and grab for my tank builds. It just, it's really a weird console. I certainly wouldn't go out and spend a billion just to grab this console for a tank build if any of you were considering that. It's, it's not worth it. it. Really is not. I've been running the ship and I don't even have the console slotted. I don't think it's worth using. While we're on the topic of consoles, let's quickly go over the other Vodwar consoles which can be used on this ship. First up is the Polaron Barrage launcher from the Manassa. This console creates those Polaron Barrages you often see the Vodwar use. 
Unfortunately, even with the two-piece set and a Polaron build buffing this console, it performs quite bad. In multiple runs, it struggled to do even half of what I was seeing damage-wise from the Juggernaut Array with a full Polaron build on, so that's a uh, very poor performance. And then we have the Assault Mode Relays console from the Astica. When used on the Juggernaut specifically, it gives 15% crit D and 10% firing cycle haste while it's up. You do lose speed and turn while it's also up, so it's not really worth using just for that alone. But uh, with 20 seconds uptime every 2 minutes, it's really hard to justify using this console over the numerous other options out there that provide a much larger buff. Also note that this console does not have any special animation when activated, like how it uh, makes the Astica side stick out and all that. It, it doesn't do anything like that with this uh, Juggernaut. Next up is the trait, Weapon Emitter Overdrive, you'll often see this abbreviated in as WEO in some build post that will pop up, well, any time in the future. When activating any energy weapon firing mode, such as Fire at Will or Cannon Rapid Fire, you gain a 20 second buff that increases your weapon power cost by 50%. It also increases your crit chance for your energy weapons by 10% and gives your energy weapons a plus 50 accuracy rating buff. Now, this 50% weapon power cost sounds scary, but it's not as bad as you think. Between my fleet spire core giving me minus 10% weapon power cost and emergency weapon cycle giving me another minus 50% weapon power cost, I was still well below the base weapon power cost on my weapons with this active, as shown on the screen. Mathematically, I've had several of the number crunchers from STO builds tell me that this trait should be around maybe slightly better than Promise of Frosty on most high-end builds. Personally, I much prefer this trait as it takes me around 70% crit chance in combat, but I don't think it's worth going out and buying this ship just for the trait. Certainly not yet, it needs more testing, but uh, I think if you go for the ship, which if you're going for high-end DPS, you're probably going to grab this ship. It's, it's a nice perk. Finally, we're at the performance side of this review. It's likely just my personal piloting style, but even on my first stream with this ship, I got significantly better numbers than what I'd been seeing out of other ships I've recently flown. I've only been able to get into a few hives with this ship so far due to having finals last week, but I have been able to do a few ISA runs. I'm not a fan of ISA runs due to them being a very poor benchmark at the high end, but I know many of you still like ISA, so uh, here are the numbers. In my first 3-2 ISA with this ship, I managed to get 358k, and in a left-right ISA with Florian threat tanking for me, I was able to go a tad more aggressive than usual and get a 323k parse. In slower pug runs, I've still had this ship consistently doing around 250 to 260k. As of this weekend, though, I have went through and managed to get a few HSCs in, and with a puller on loadout equipped, I managed to take the number two spot on the HSC table with a 355k parse. Had I used a proper disruptor or phaser loadout, I'm confident I would have taken the number one spot on the HSC DPS table. Now, let's recap and get my final verdict. Earlier this year, Cryptic Spartan was put in charge of the system side of ship design. Spartan is very well aware of what the current high-end meta looks like, and created a layout that is almost perfect for the current high-end meta. The only change that this ship could benefit from is making the Lieutenant Cyan Engineer or Universal. This would allow for a dual Ox to Bat 1 setup, so you could run Emergency Power to Weapons 3. This ship is designed for massive forward damage output, and the layout it has allows it to do just that. It's not going to be a very tanky ship or a very maneuverable one, but for energy weapon damage potential, it's probably the best thing we've ever had. The combination of Miracle Worker and Intel spec seats provides us with an extremely powerful combination of abilities. Miracle Worker provides mixed armament synergy and narrow sensor bands, alongside Intel's override subsystem safeties. These combine to give an insane damage boost for your weapons, provided you know how to properly take advantage of them as with most things. The weapon and console layout of the ship really allow it to run a very common high-end meta cannon loadout. Uh, and while the uh, option to have six tack consoles is certainly nice here, I don't think you should jump straight away to six uh, tack consoles. I think you should 
take a look at some of these sets you have. See if you need any more survivability. Uh, look at other options before you go and grab a sixth locator or a colony tack console. Uh, there are other things out there that will work for that sixth uh, slot via the universal. And you do not have to default rate to another tack console. Uh, personally, I've been running the particle field projector there quite a bit in some of the elite queues. But in places like ISA, that's where you'd want to slot in the sixth tack console because you really don't need much survivability there. The only true downside to this ship is the maneuverability. I feel anyone looking to grab this ship should try to get someone to give them a copy of it on Tribble to mess around with. If you couldn't stand how the scimitar flew or drifted, you're probably going to hate this ship. And the final verdict is, if you can handle how this ship handles, it's a wonderful ship for high-end energy weapon performance. It compares closest to the Scimitar, Jemadar Vanguard Warship, and the Husnock performance-wise. All of those are very viable options for high-end gameplay, but I truly believe it's down to the pilot for which will do best. I do better in this ship than any of the others, and others out there may do better in something like the Jemadar Warship than anything else. So it's really down to the pilot. But anyhow, this wraps up this specific video. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. I will be doing multiple videos on this ship, going over some various builds and all that, so stay tuned for those. And I will be having some more gameplay footage whenever I do something really nice with this ship. Thank you for watching. See you next time.